Hey, what's up? So I'm here today with my 2013 Yamaha V-Star 1300 Deluxe. This is a bike that I've been reasonably happy with. Um, for the price, you really get a lot. Hard bags, full fairing, uh, onboard GPS from the factory, and I've used that a lot. So I've been pretty pleased with the way this bike performs and handles. However, I haven't been so happy with sort of satisfaction when you when you turn the throttle. It doesn't have quite enough mm, sort of oomph factor, so I've been looking for ways to give it a little more. I'm not looking for a huge, I mean, I don't expect a huge improvement. I mean, it's never gonna be a 1600 or an 1800 engine. So, you know, I'm realistic. A Couple things I have tried. I tried putting in a K&N air filter to try to open up the airflow to the engine. I really didn't notice any difference with everything else being stock. I also tried to switch from, <clears throat> from regular gas to mid-grade to premium gas. And I did notice a small improvement when I went from regular to mid-grade, uh, no further improvement when I went to premium. Now I know there's a lot of uh, disagreement over how much grade of fuel uh, affects performance. Now, of course, this is not a performance engine, so a lot of people would say, you're not gonna get any difference, and if you see a difference, it's all in your head. Well, I've had several cars that have not been performance engines, and when I made the change to uh, premium gas, I did notice a significant improve in uh, drivability and satisfaction when you step on the accelerator. Now, I've had other cars where that's made no difference whatsoever. So really, I think it's a, when it comes to fuel selection with a non-performance engine, uh, some vehicles benefit and some don't. Before this bike, I had a 650 V-Star. Fuel, uh, fuel grade made no difference whatsoever. But on this one, I have noticed a small difference. So I was happy with that. But I'm looking for a little more. Now, everybody knows that on a bike like this, a, a V-Twin, you'll get your biggest performance increase for whatever performance increases are able to be had if you change the exhaust. Now, I don't want to change the exhaust because I don't want the bike to be louder. <clears throat> I know most people who change the exhaust do it, for, do it because they want it louder or they want to change the tone of the exhaust note. Uh, <clears throat> while I wouldn't mind having a deeper exhaust note on this bike, uh, it's a little too sort of high and it's a little tinny, but uh, I absolutely don't want the bike to be louder. I'm 57 years old, I have excellent hearing, and I want to keep it that way. I want to ride, but I also want to hear music, and I want to talk to people uh, without straining. I don't want to have hearing aids. I don't want any damage to my hearing ever. So I want the bike as quiet as possible. If I could make this bike as quiet as a Goldwing, I would do that. So. I'm not messing with the exhaust because there's no such thing as an aftermarket exhaust that's quieter than stock. So I'm gonna try two more things uh, before I sort of give up on making this bike a little more uh, satisfying when I roll on the throttle. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I tried the K&N air filter in the stock box and that didn't make much of a difference. So today I'm gonna to put on the uh, <clears throat> Cobra PowerFlow air intake. Now this also has a K&N filter inside it, but it has a whole different flow stream, and it's, it appears to be a lot more open than the stock uh, air intake, so I'm gonna see if that will make much of a difference. Now, in addition to that, I'm also gonna put on the Cobra FI2000 fuel injection controller so that it will compensate for the increased airflow to the engine and since this bike and most, most modern bikes to pass emissions tests and, um, <clears throat> and fuel efficiency standards and so on, they need to be set from the factory to be fairly lean. So this will, in a, and, and putting on the uh, increased airflow air box, that might make the engine even a little more lean. So I'm gonna compensate for that by putting on this FI2000 controller to optimize that air fuel mixture and see what happens. So, now, <clears throat> this may not work as far as giving me improved, uh, improved performance, but we'll see. Like I said, I'm not looking for, I, I, rather I don't expect a huge bump, but a little improved satisfaction will be worth these, 
the, the cost of these, uh, these parts. So we'll see what happens. So I'm going to put them on, take it for a test drive, and let you know whether or not I notice much difference. All right, let's get to it. Okay, so I got those parts installed and took the bike on a lengthy test ride, well over 100 miles, and I was under different conditions, uphills, downhills, country roads, freeways, all speeds up to about, about 80 miles an hour. And the verdict is this modification, or these two modifications, did make a noticeable improvement in the power of the bike. What I mainly noticed was that for the same speed that I was at prior to the modification, I could now be in a lower gear. So previously, where I was reaching that uh, third to fourth shift point and fourth to fifth, I could now make that shift point at a higher speed. So for the same speed, the modification has allowed the engine to run at lower revs, so I can shift at a higher speed. And this does give me more power. So the bike is more satisfying to ride, and I think the modification was, was effective. So the question now is, was it worth it? So this is January of 2021. The two modifications, the Cobra Power Flow Air Intake and the Cobra FI2000 Fuel Injection Controller, uh, I looked around on the internet and the best price I got was about $600 for the two parts. Installation wasn't difficult, it took about uh, took three or four hours. There are other videos uh, on YouTube about how to do that, so I didn't include all those details because it would have been too long. But I guess the question is, uh, compared to how it was before, is it good enough, or is it improved enough afterwards to be worth it? And before, the bike was, you know, it was fine, but I'm not riding the bike to just be fine. I want it to be fun. And for me, I was at the point with this bike where yeah, I was thinking of trading it for something a little more, a little more powerful, a little more responsive, just a little more, just a little more. And I think this modification has made it so that I can enjoy this bike a, a while longer and, you know, save my 15 or 20 grand for another year. So, <clears throat> With that, I'll close this video, and uh, uh, that's, that's my impression of these two modifications. I think it was worth doing, and uh, happy riding.